All right, Ethernet KRL. Um, what is it? And we're going to talk about uh, features, areas of application, functionality, configuration, programming, compatibility. I'm going. To, we're going to do some uh, some demos. Uh, what is it? Um, Ethernet KRL is a framework that allows the Kuka robot to uh, Kuka robot controller to communicate with external systems, devices, computers, whatever it is, over Ethernet. So TCP/IP. Uh, either TCP or UDP. I'm going to start with a real life uh, project that we did some time ago um, where we used Ethernet KRL. And uh, so let's show a video. Uh, it's going to look stupid, but it's not. Okay, so what's going on here? This seems to be, you know, extremely uh, easy for a robot to do, except that um, this was a just a demonstration of uh, uh, Ethernet KRL, where um, the um, the requirement was for the user to be able to draw or uh, um, any kind of shape like a rectangle, an arc, a dot, an ellipse, a, um, a cylinder, a triangle, um, you know, uh, ellip, ellip, ellipse, whatever, uh, an arc or an ellipse, a rounded um, uh, rectangle, a series of lines or one line, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the, the idea is for the robot, to command the robot to do that from an external system. And it would be nice to not having to program all that and be able to just um, send it from an external system where the shapes are going to be created from uh, the CAD. The, the user will draw uh, those sections and those shapes and then generate a file that would be sent to the robot, and the robot would do that. Um, so it would be really nice to have something um, like an XML file like this, where you know you have a settings um, section where you define your units, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You define your um, you know uh, dimensions, uh, the overall dimensions, and then you define uh, your speeds and your um, and so on, and then you define your shapes in terms of you know the first one is a rectangle, second one is a circle, then an arc and a line and a connected lines and ellipse, etc. A dot, etc., etc. Um, and this is what what um, Ethernet KRL is is about. It's about um, um, this joint between the robot and the external system. Um, the external system does not care how the robot works or the language that it uses, but just an interface in between to um, to talk and to execute. Okay, features. Um, like we said, it's an interface for data exchange with external systems. The transmission is through TCP IP, either uh, TCP or uh, UDP, uh, configuration through XML based uh, file, uh, where it can be sending and, send in and receiving um, data in, in XML, uh, binary or raw strings. Um, 
configuration of the user data is in XML based configuration. Uh, read and write data from robot and the submit interpreter. Uh, if you are not familiar with uh, how the, uh, the KUKA controller works, we have a uh, what we call the robot interpreter where the KRL program, the main KRL program runs. And then we have um, up to eight threads that are running uh, in parallel, and we call those the submit interpreter. So we can talk either from the main robot or talk through uh, the other threads and have the main robot you know, working while you are asking for um, status and setting the override if you need to, et cetera, et cetera. You can have up to 16 active connections so if the robot is a, a client then it can talk to 16 uh, servers and the robot can be either a server or a client areas of application the first one that comes to mind is additive manufacturing uh, no one wants to program the robot for all those small motions and so on. So Ethernet QRL is heavily used in additive uh, manufacturing. ROS, robot uh, OS, um, uses, when it comes to KUKA, uh, uses um, uh, both Ethernet QRL and robot sensor interface for, for real-time uh, communication. Entertainment. Um, when you see films like Gravity and, and so on and so forth, um, you know, they're filmed with, uh, with KUKA robots and communication usually is through Ethernet KRL. In AR and VR, augmented reality and virtual reality, uh, you know, we talk to, to the robot through, you know, Ethernet KRL, for example. And just a, just, um, uh, note here ARVR uh, we used uh, we had an application an internal application where we have a, a, you know a, a headset to look at what's going on with the robot and follow the robot and so on uh, with OPC UA we could only achieve 500 seconds 500 milliseconds with Ethernet KRL we were down to 50 milliseconds so the motion was smooth and so on. Uh, integration with um, AMRs, um, automated uh, mobile robots, um, uh, and, and other robots that uh, do not speak KRL and so on. And any other application where you want to set up the robot and not touch it, and just tell it what to do from outside. Any questions so far? Does not look like it yet. Okay. Functionality. So, uh, in Ethernet KRL, um, we're going to initialize the connection, whether the robot is a client or a server, and then we're going to be sending receiving data until you know the client, whether it's the robot or or the external system. Uh, closes the connection. If the robot is the server and the client closes the connection, then it's up to you what you want to do. Um, reopen uh, the connection and wait for somebody else to, to connect or just kill it or that's, um, that's part of the uh, program. Okay. Um, so connections, like we said, can be established from the KRC or an external system, depending on who's, uh, who's the client and who's the server. Uh, the connection is established over the KUKA line interface, so you do not need anything anything else to, to make the hardware connection, unless you want to go through a switch. Um, otherwise, you can connect directly uh, to the robot. Uh, connections are initialized um, either in the robot or the submit interpreter. It does not matter. And if you 
so you know if you uh, open the connection from one you can use it from the other um, no problem the when the robot is a server then you can set a flag or an output um, to tell the robot that uh, uh, a, um, a server has, has has connected to it and the connections can be deleted uh, reset by you know actions like uh, resetting the program resetting the submit or um, rebooting the the robot etc etc functionality um, data transmission um, in the data transmission sequence the robot is sending the KRL commands are used to write the data to the memory and then a uh, the uh, the uh, another command would be to send to the memory uh, otherwise you could also send directly you don't have to uh, do those steps um, in the data reception when how, you know, we're receiving the data um, we can either check the memory or get like we said or get a notification with the new data has arrived and then you can go and um, read the data and, and process it so the memory is um, is implemented as a, as a stack so you can define how many uh, elements uh, can can be there and then you can define whether they go in a FIFO, or the process in FIFO or, or LIFO. So that's, that's up to you. So this way you don't you don't uh, you don't uh, lose data. You can just uh, stream data and leave it there, and the robot will just go and, and grab it. The data formats. Um, so either XML structure that you can define whichever way you want, uh, or binary data with a fixed length, or variable binary data with an end string. You tell the robot, you know, when you see this character or set of characters, then that's the end of transmission, take it and do something with it. So for example, here's an uh, XML uh, format example. Uh, we send in, you know, pause, position, or something. One, two, three, four, and we send in a mode, or we send in a binary that's not human readable, or we send in a raw string um, that is human readable, and we're telling it the um, end of string um, is either, you know, um, end of line carriage return, or or one of them, or or, or something. The binary and XML can be operated simultaneously um, at the same connection, uh, but the two binary variants cannot be operated simultaneously. Okay, um, we're not gonna dwell here too much. Um, like we said, the, the robot can be either a client or a server. Uh, if the client is the robot is a is a client, then it can connect up to 16 uh, servers. Um, so if the robot is a client, then the KRL, KRL um, uh, will open a connection, it will send and receive data, and at the end it will close the connection. If the um, the robot is a server then the robot will open will start the server and then it will wait for connections uh, if you've set up a flag or an output to report the connection that that's going to be there and then we're going to send and receive that back and forth and then wait for the until the client closes the connection any questions so far uh, there is a question. There's one regarding uh, the webinar being recorded. The webinar is recorded. It will be live on our website, and it will always be live on our page on YouTube uh, in a, 
approximately a week and a half. Anywhere between a week to two weeks, it will be up. Other than that, I think we're good on questions right now. Okay, thank you. Um, so like we said, the configuration is, uh, is done through um, XML, and it resides on C, KRC, Robotter, Config, User, Common, Ethernet, KRL. The name of the file is how you access that configuration. And we're going to go through this uh, in, in the in the demos and an example that we're going to look at. Um, it has three sections. You have the configuration section, which tells the robot, you know, the IP address and the port, and whether um, the whether it is a, a client or a server, and whether to use TCP or UDP, um, and how to handle uh, exceptions and so on and so forth. And then you have the Perceive um, area uh, where you define what how, what you're receiving and in what format, uh, and then you have the send um, uh, area where you define what you're sending and what format you're sending it. For example, um, in this the configuration section, um, we have you know, the external system, this is the IP address, and we only need to have that if it's in type, if it's, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, if the external system is um, is, a, a cloud, is a server, then we need to, to define its um, IP address. Um, if it's not, then we don't need actually, we don't need this section. Um, in the internal section, um, we define, you know, the buffering, whether it's FIFO and how many, uh, and the buffer size and connection timeout, and then we can define um, an out, either an output or a flag, either set flag or set output. And in this case, if a uh, if uh, a, a client uh, connects to the to the robot, then output number one will be on. And this is the IP address of the robot itself, and this is the port that you're going to be using to connect to it, and whether it's TCP or UDP. Okay. So the type, you know, client server, uh, the port, um, in the environment, uh, you know, linking, you're saying uh, when do we uh, when do we delete the the connection? We can say programs on on reset and deselect, or a system when we're configuring the I/O, or when we restart the robot, or we can say submit, which means where we can when we cancel or reset the submit, and the default is is program. Um, so and now this is the the buffer size. As you can see, it's you know can be really big. Um, the alive either set an output or set a flag, and you can also do a ping to ping um, the external system every so many seconds. All right. So this this is uh, trivial. We don't have to uh, dwell with it. Um, you know the difference between you already know the difference between TCP and UDP. UDP is much faster because it does not um, use handshake, um, and but at the same time it's not it's risky because it's it's not guaranteed uh, to be delivered. Uh, so it, it depends on the application. Uh, if you don't you know if you don't care, then use TCP. It's uh, uh, more secure um, in in terms of you know, if it doesn't if it doesn't deliver, then it's gonna try again and so on and so forth. But if you want speed, um, use UDP. But it does not mean that uh, Ethernet curl is real time. It just means that you can exchange data much faster. The connection, uh, like we said, um, goes to the KLI um, x66. This is the uh, small uh, um, 
controller and same thing for the bigger controller um, no 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 additional hardware is is needed for for the connection any questions so far uh nope okay all right so this is a this is a um example of configuration for xml data so we're saying we're get we're going to be receiving a tag so sensor offset of type int uh the mode you know last in first out um then a status a correction which is a frame so xyz abc and what we want is we want to know when this one arrives so we're going to set um output number two when it arrives and then we have a temp with an attribute s01 which is type real and a temp the same temp but with attribute s02 of type real and then we then will the whole thing arrives the whole thing arrives then um the flag three is set so this is an example of what the external system will be sending to the robot so sensor offset 10 status okay um correction xyz abc and temp as you can see here with attributes and not elements okay the correction is attributes by default but here the offset and the status are an element okay this is binary data um so type byte the size is 10 kilobytes and when it arrives we set the flag 14 flag number 14 is set when it arrives um, then we have the stream or raw string um, size 10 bytes max flag 14 is set when we get it and the end of string is either 59 which is the um, the semicolon or so the five means or or ABC you can change it to to your needs in your application i usually use this is the format i usually use because it's a lot easier to to handle and i in most cases i use um, semicolon okay so send in and when we're sending um xml data it's in the send area and here we're sending a tool uh the base a pause um and a status uh with our int um attribute and status with s int attribute s int our int and s int are for um, robot interpreter and submit interpreter okay so it would be some the robot if so if we set this up you would expect on your side something like this robot that's robot here tool one base two uh position x y z a b c and the status s int r int okay so programming <clears throat> um ethernet krl uh, has a bunch of built-in functions to handle opening um the socket and waiting and reading data converting data etc etc so for example you know to initialize a connection you say aki in it and then the channel name and the channel name is the same as the configuration file name but without the uh, without the extension XML. 
once it's um, initialized, then we can open it. And if it if the robot is a server, then we're going to be waiting on connections. And um, and if the robot is um, is a um, um, client, then it can be start sending sending stuff to uh, to the server. Uh, then you have if you're using um, XML, you can set values. For example, we're going to set a real value into the channel name, into the tag, and we're going to set it to this. Same thing, you know, set in, set pool, set frame, set string. And once we're done building that, then we can say send that tag or the whole thing. Can send just a frame or or the whole the whole um, configuration, and then when we receive data, then we have uh, Ethernet QRL gives you uh, functions to read that data. So we're, so in, in this case, for example, I'm reading an integer from a channel name from the tag and putting it in in var. Same thing for you know, string, frame, boolean real etc etc and when you're done then you can close your your connection any questions nope yeah. okay so like we said um pop for an aki the external system will send the data the data from the far can be read with Carol functions. Uh, decoding into user data must be done manually. By manually, we mean you're going to use uh, these uh, functions to decode um, uh, the, the messages. And the maximum buffer size is 65,533 bytes. So it's, it's pretty big. Binary and string. So in this case, um, you want you and the external, you and the robot will agree on um, what the end of string uh, is and the transmission for that string is um, by setting it in the like we said in the configuration file. And whenever you send um, a string uh, with that ending, then the the robot will take it as one block of data. Um, XML data, um, same thing, except that for the XML data, we stack, you know, every tag by itself. So you can actually um, get tag, get num variables only from here, from A, um, and or uh, from one, or all at the same time. That's up to you how you want to handle it and what you want to process and depending on uh, the application, uh, you want you know either read everything or read from one stack or the other. Um, XML data has not to be sent in full length each time as long as the XML syntax is maintained. So you don't have to send every tag in here. If you only want to send the offset, that's fine. If you want to send the correction, that's fine as well. So you don't have to build the whole um, configuration to send it. Okay. Event messages. Um, like we said, when a connection is active, we can set an output or a flag. When an individual XML element has arrived, we can also set that. We can also say, you know, uh, only when X arrives, correction X arrives, we can set a flag, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Or when a complete XML structure or binary or uh, stream arrives, we can also, can also do that. 
Um, the only thing that you need to remember is if you set an output, um, then um, you need to reset it by yourself. Oh, it's right here. Um, out flag must be reset in PRL. So you wait for it to, to show up, you read the data, or um, reset it right away, and then you read the data and, and move on. Okay. Compatibility. Um, controller, uh, PPRC, PRC4, PRC5, Office PC, and Office Lite. Uh, if you are not familiar with Office PC, Office PC is um, is a computer that has all the hardware of the PC that runs uh, on the controller. So it's pretty much uh, the controller. Whatever works on the Office PC will work on the controller. Um, so you can do all your testing in there. Um, Office Lite is the um, emulation. Uh, Windows emulation of, of the robot. Uh, you don't need no hardware, no special hardware. It's just um, a virtual machine. And you can also test your uh, KRL programs um, and connections and so on with Office PC. Bus system for communication is obviously Ethernet, either TCP or UTP, depending on your application, and the uh, TSS 8.2 or later. Okay, um, are there any questions before we move on to actually showing it to you in action? No questions. Okay. So let's move on. Can you still see my, um, my screen? Yes. Okay. So this is a, this program is running on Office PC that I have here under my desk. And this is the project that runs on it. Um, what, what we did, is, what I did is, um, you can see here that there are two submit interpreters. One is called ecom, EKI com handler. That's a thread that runs and takes care of the communication. And one is called EKI connection monitor. This one just runs and um, uh, sees if the connection was broken and reopens the channel and waits for another uh, another client to to connect. Obviously, the robot is running as as a server. This, um, what's running right here is a, what I call, obviously it's running Ethernet PRL. It's also running an EKI manager. This is a um, start, you know, starting application for uh, communication and framework to communicate with the robot through Ethernet PRL. Um, we look at the, uh, common the configuration file. So the robot is set as a server, uh, as a server because the external is a client. Um, the robot IP address, the port that the server has to use to um, communicate with uh, the robot. Uh, when a, a server connects to us, we set flag number one. Uh, then we receive um, stream in a tag called buffer, uh, and we when uh, when it arrives, we set flag number ten and maximum of sixty sixty four bytes, and the end to end of string is fifty nine, which is the semicolon. Okay. Um, 
if we look at the connection connection monitor like i said this is this is going to be running uh, uh as a thread by itself so it's going to just loop and end up all the time and it says that if um we if the previous uh it was previously uh connected but now it's not connected then we just reconnect which means we reopen the channel and wait for for uh, somebody else to to connect again, and then we just flush um, the um, connection if we need to. In the command handler, um, again, this is also a submit interpreter that runs in parallel to the robot um, uh, program. Um, what it does is um, when it starts. It runs at the beginning it runs the main program and then it just waits for a connection and then um, it connects to the host which means that it opens the, um, the the server and then it's going to wait for a connection it's going to loop wait for Make sure that the flag, the connection flag is on, and then wait for um, receive flag, means that somebody has sent data. And once we, that, we do that, then we read the command. We'll go through this a little bit. And, and then we handle the command. Um, some commands can be handled in this thread, and some commands cannot be handled in this thread. So, for example, if you want to do a motion, you can't do motions from this thread. So we'll just delegate it to the main program. You know, set in the, the speed, set in the uh, um, et cetera, et cetera. Just uh, those that we can't handle here, we we'll just delegate them to the main program. Those that we can handle here, um, then we can we can do them here. So, for example, you know, we're reset. We want to set the override. We can handle it right here, and so we're going to read the value that was sent, <clears throat> and then we're going to set the override if it's correct, and then we're going to send to the uh, the client that either succeeded or there was an error. You know, we can set the home, um, get the robot type, the robot name, serial number, um, the software version, the robot runtime, get the uh, state of absolute accuracy, um, get the uh, operational mode, um, the, if there's a stop mess, you know, whether the robot is home, uh, we can get the, the tool data, the base data, Current override, uh, the number of axes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Whatever you want to, whatever you want to, um, to uh, program, you can program, and then from outside you can you can ask for it. Um, so, for example, here. So I have this test program this is a ki manager this is a java program and in here we have implemented you know get robot type get robot na robot name etc etc um, then we have a test program if i run it Now it's doing a motion. Okay. And now it's done. And the, the robot, um, it closed the connection. The robot reopened the connection and is waiting. So if we see here, for example, um, we connected. We got what the break delay is. 
Uh, we got the program state, the program name that's running the KI main, and the program state is running. Um, stop message, no, there is no stop. The robot type, the robot name, serial number, the uh, version, uh, the runtime, how many robot axes, how many external axes, uh, the DH parameters, um, setting the Cartesian speed, where the override, we're, we're getting the upper joint limits and the lower joint limits and the gear ratios and uh, maximum joint speeds, maximum joint accents, axes, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, I can run it again. Okay, so so that's that's one of the, you know, um, like, like we said, the starter um, uh, package that we use a lot, and we also give our customers when they want to uh, implement things like this, and it has worked uh, worked great. So if you have any applications coming up with Ethernet KRL, get in touch with us. We can hook you up with the uh, with the starter. Uh, uh, package and you'll be programming and drawing it in no time. Here's another example. This is a calibration, robot calibration software that we use to calibrate um, uh, our robots. So it connects and commands the, the robot and also laser tracker for uh, making uh, measurements. Um, I'm connecting to to this office PC, to this uh, computer, but for the in this case for the uh, uh, laser tracker, uh, it's in uh, simulation mode. So I'm just faking the connection, and when I wanted to measure something, it just um, it returns um, what it is. So, so what this does is it's going to if I connect to the robot, then it went to the system, it read the serial number of the robot, it read the robot type, and it was we only we already know that this robot uses this type of base and this type of tool and uh, and this type of load data. Um, then when I go here and I want to calibrate the robot, I, I, I press calibrate. What the robot is going, what the system, what the system is going to do is going to read the state of the robot, make sure that everything is okay in terms of where the robot is, is it ready? Um, and if it does, then it's going to command it to go to the first position. Uh, when the robot arrives at that position, it's going to talk back to here and says, "I am there." And the software is going to ask the laser tracker to make a measurement and saves those and and at the end it will create the uh, calibration file and it will ask us to you know set it and reset and run the validation program so i reduce the number of uh, normally we use like 100 positions but for this um, demo i just reduce it to 10 so it says that the robot is not ready and that is because, uh, so it says the robot make sure that the robot is in the Canon position, the program EKI main is running, et cetera, et cetera. And in our case, the culprit is that the robot is not at the right position. It's not in, you know, zero months, 90, 90, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So we're gonna, all we need to do is we can just Reset the program. So now it went back to zero minus 9090, 0, 0, 0, 0, And I say OK. Now it reads again. Everything is OK. Then it's going to go through. Send the robot, take the measurement, shows the difference uh, between the nominal and the measured. Etc. Etc. 
right? So now, and it, if, like I said, everything is simulated, but it, you know, to this low dex bid, et cetera, et cetera. And then it's gonna do the validation points. And it's almost done. And now it's, you know, the calibration was success. Again, everything is simulated in this case, but it shows you what was done. So, so that's what this, you know, two v usage of, of the uh, technology. Um, like we said also in uh, additive manufacturing, for example, um, and this you can easily extend to do whatever you want with it. One of the things that was done for additive manufacturing is to create buffers of data. Um, um, like 2000, you know, each buffer would be, you know, 2000 or 4000 long, and the user would fill uh, those buffers, you know, fill uh, buffer one with, you know, commands, whether they are motions, whether they are, you know, um, Changing tools, changing base, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and once that's done, then it will ask the the robot to go through that buffer. And while it's going through that buffer, the user would fill uh, the next buffer, and so on and so forth, so that um, there is no waste of time, and and, and so on and so forth. Another um, usage is if you don't have a PLC, then you can use um, Ethernet KRL to run the robot in external mode, even though there's no, no PLC, and you can start, uh, turn on the drives, uh, do everything that the PLC would do to, to make the robot um, work. And, and this way you don't have to learn KRL um, or the intricacies of KRL, you can just Either set up the, the robot by yourself or get somebody to, like a KUKA engineer or something, to set it up for you. And then you don't have to deal with it anymore. You just do everything from, you know, from your desk, on your laptop, um, and so on. That's all I have. So if you have questions, please uh, send them my way. Okay. Any questions? Uh, yep. Uh, first one is EKI Manager a separate option package? It's 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 a local option package that that I created here, um, and we normally we don't sell it. It's just uh, if you have project where you need it, then we can can happily give it to you. Uh, and then there's another question. It says, any KUKA SIM support? KUKA SIM support. That I have to get back to you. If you want to send, uh, I don't deal with KUKA SIM a lot. Uh, if you want to send me an email, me put my email address. Um, That's my email address. Yeah, send me an email. I'll I'll get back to you. Okay, those were the only questions as well. Okay. Alrighty, thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And like I said, oh, there's a couple more questions that rolled in. Do you want to do you want to answer these? Sure. Okay. It says based on the explanation, I could run a code in my computer in Python or other language. 
Absolutely. All righty. I think, okay, it says with no PLC interface. With no PLC interface, absolutely. So, so let me let me. Um, uh, so there are two two ways of doing that. One is you can you can um, run in auto mode, get the robot ready, um, and then go back to your desk and do everything you need. The other option would be run in external mode, and either have a um, I/O like four inputs and output I/O, and and um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, loop them back, you know, output to input, and then you can, um, you know, drives on from your desk, uh, drives off from your desk, uh, you know, acknowledge the the errors, start the program from from your desk, and and run the program from your desk. So you absolutely do not need, or or you can also do that without IO. Um, so you, you, yes, you absolutely could run everything without um, PLC. Okay, it looks like that's it. And like I said, this uh, this recording it will be live. Um, safe to say, two weeks. Approximately, it's going to be on our YouTube and on the website. So if that's everything, thank you. Um, and we will end the webinar. Thank you, everyone. Industrial Intelligence.